Recently, the Canadian Screen Awards gave Christopher Plummer a Lifetime Achievement Award. It was presented to him by Canadian filmmaker Adam Agoyan, who's worked with Plummer on two films. One of those films is Ararat, which I have said before is one of my favorite Canadian films. The other one, made in 2015, is Remember. I've been meaning to see this film for over two years. And may I say, this movie confirms to me once again that both Plummer and Egoyan truly are masters of their craft. The film follows the story of Zev Gutmann, an 88-year-old German man living in a nursing home in the United States. He's suffering from dementia to the point that he has to be repeatedly reminded that his wife has passed away. But he's got bigger concerns. A dear friend of his and fellow Holocaust survivor, Max, sends him on a dangerous mission to find the man responsible for murdering their families at Auschwitz. Remember is a fresh take on the subject of vengeance finally getting its due. Our hero and crusader is a feeble old man who can barely function anymore, struggling against his own disintegrating mind to stay on target. But with Max watching over his mission and the occasional reminder of his mission, Zev moves forward, determined to find a Nazi who's been living under an assumed name and kill him. The movie lives or dies on its lead performance, and there is no Canadian actor living who is more talented than Christopher Plummer. He's thrown into situations which are grim, tense, and occasionally even darkly funny. Plummer pulls it off brilliantly. This film's supporting cast is filled with famous character actors like Martin Landau, Dean Norris, Bruno Ganz, and even Jürgen Prochnow. I also need to praise the script by Benjamin August, which takes an outlandish idea and gives it all the gravitas required to pull it off. August did extensive research in how to portray this situation most accurately, and it shows throughout the film. There are fascinating little hints thrown out to us that are so subtle, you might not even notice them the first time. I certainly didn't. As for the direction, well, as much as I love the guy, Adam Agoyan has been dealing with a bit of a lull in his career ever since Chloe. But in terms of quality, this is a return to form, just like how Snowden was a return to form for Oliver Stone. It's a return to elements which Egoyan has a lot of experience with, such as memory, secrets, and the horror of past atrocities carried into the present day. It's not the best film Adam Egoyan's ever done, but it easily ranks up there with the very best of his films. There really isn't much else to say. Watch this movie if you want a tense, but also darkly comedic film, which portrays all the extremities of vengeance, no matter how absurd or bizarre or disturbing they may seem. And really, I think that was very much part of the point. And this is especially true of how they decide to wrap this film up. Some of you will probably shake your heads at it, but me, I enjoyed the heck out of it because it was perfectly in keeping with the rest of the film. It's a gripping tale of revenge fused with a dark comedy.